Xi Jinping recently had this to say, not exactly original. You'd expect something more from, you know, the, the, the Confucian society. But anyway, quote, those who play with fire will eventually get burned. Of course, talking to Joe Biden about that. Okay, so he's threatening us. What can they do, though? Aren't you curious about that? I am. Joining me now, Dean Chang with the Heritage Foundation. You've spent your career studying the Chinese military, Dean. Uh, Americans know a little about their military. They don't know anything about the Chinese military. What can they do? What can't they do? Uh, well, the Chinese military actually is a full-service organization. So they have a substantial nuclear capability, and it's growing. Uh, we have now seen, uh, over the last two years, 300 nuclear silos being built in western China. Uh, so that's going to give them a nuclear cap capacity that is going to start very quickly to approach that of us and the Russians. Uh, both of us are limited by nuclear arms control agreements. The Chinese have uh, one of the world's largest navies, and it's one of the world's newest navies. So they are building uh, aircraft carriers. They are building surface warships, uh, some of which look a lot like our Arleigh Burke class Aegis destroyers. They're building cruisers. They're build building amphibious ships, and they are expanding their naval infantry force, their version of uh, our U.S. Marine Corps. So they are uh, obtaining the ability to storm beaches, to take islands like Taiwan. They have one of the world's largest air forces, and uh, included in that is not only fighters and fighter bombers uh, and bombers, but also uh, airborne early warning aircraft like our AWACS. So they are rapidly moving beyond just combat aircraft to combat support capabilities. And those capabilities are important because they're the kinds of capabilities that allow you to efficiently apply your combat power. They're building tankers. They're building a strategic bomber now. Uh, the H-20, so a, uh, no other country at this point is building new strategic bombers, although we have one, the B-21, uh, on the books. Perhaps most importantly um, is that they are building a space and cyber force. We have seen the Chinese test uh, anti-satellite capabilities, and they're, they're expanding. We've seen them uh, hacking all sorts of places, uh, everyone from Coca-Cola to the U.S. government uh, to the Office of Personnel Management. Uh, and a lot of that is being done by the Chinese military, even a lot of the commercial espionage. Uh, less talked about is Chinese logistics, Chinese training. These are all the softer parts, but that allow a military to actually use its equipment efficiently, use its equipment well. It's one of the things that differentiates, I think, the Chinese from, say, some of the Arab militaries of the 1960s and 70s. They had lots of modern equipment, but hadn't trained well on them. Okay, Dean, that's all sounded pretty horrific. Let's focus on nu nuclear here quickly. Does China have the ability, as we do, to deliver nuclear weapons in multiple different ways, hit really anywhere on the planet if they want to? Are they there? Are they where we are, where Russia is? They don't have as many nuclear weapons, we think, as we and the Russians do at this point. Uh, they don't have quite as many ICBMs, um, but they are building them, and they are building quite a few of them. They're building road mobile ones, uh, the DF-41. They're building ones that will go into silos. They're building nuclear-powered submarines that will carry ballistic missiles. Uh, they're building about five of those. More recently, they have tested now a um, weapon that would go into orbit. We and the Russians both looked at this in the 1960s. We both agreed that was so destabilizing we wouldn't develop that capability. Because if you develop something like that, you have to start assuming that every satellite that China puts up there could be carrying a nuclear warhead. The Chinese understand that. They nonetheless tested something like this recently. Um, it's uh, suggesting that maybe they don't think about nuclear stability the same way we and the Russians do. Don't miss Jesse Kelly Breaks History. Che Guevara, the latest episode of a new series available now exclusively for First TV supporters. Visit the First TV app or thefirsttv.com to subscribe and start watching today.